Hand sketches and watercolored paintings, two things clients absolutely love. But they're also two things that young architects and designers often lack the ability to do. Thankfully, with Enscape, we can do them now through 3D rendering software faster and better than ever before. What's going on team? My name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today's video is sponsored by Enscape. It's all about bringing our renders to life, but with a little bit of artistic flair. Watercolors, hand sketches, white models. There are a series of settings in Enscape that I bet you didn't know. So let's turn around to this screen and get started with today's tutorial. With Chaos Enscape open, we can dive in to some of these creative settings. As you can see, Enscape will always open with the default photorealistic architectural scenes, which is exactly why we love Enscape, you know? It produces high quality renders in a matter of seconds without too much effort. But I bet you didn't know there's a couple creative settings in here. If we come up to the very top right hand side to this little eye with a slider underneath and open it up, our visual settings will appear. Now, of course, I've talked about these visual presets before in some of my Enscape tutorials, so I won't go over them now because specifically today we're talking about this first section here called style. As you can see, mode is currently set to none, but there is a number of items below it, each of which have their own artistic style. If you stick around to the end, I'll show you how we combine some of these styles to create an even better artistic render in a matter of minutes. So let's just work our way through them one by one. If we tap on white, give it a few seconds to load, our model will automatically turn white. And I'll move this panel to the bottom right hand corner so we can see more. The only slider that's available to us under the white setting is our outlines. And if we increase our outlines, you'll see basically the pencil sketch effect gets added darker and darker onto our model. So at 100%, it's quite a thick pencil outline of everything. Whereas at 10%, it's a nice, thin line. For me personally, the white style is used as an introductory interior render space. So generally, I'll start my architectural process with a full 3D elevation looking like this for the exterior. But as the video and the images move to the interior, then I will move to a white space. I don't want to start giving clients ideas of what the interior could look like. Rather, I want to focus on the shapes and the spaces. So that's where I would personally use the white space. Moving down to polystyrol, it's very, very similar to our white space, but it gives us a couple additional settings. So of course we still have our outline, which is exactly the same in the white space, but then we have our transmission, which basically determines how much light is transmitted through the geometry. So if we increase and decrease this slider, we'll either get a lighter or a darker scene. Moving on to our light view, we can see how much light is actually entering our scene. This particular mode is more useful for understanding sun paths, sun patterns and dark spaces. So if I was to fly into this model now and position myself in the kitchen living dining space, I'll simply adjust our field of view at the bottom here to give us a little bit more information so we can see more what's happening. We'll see that in the back left hand corner, our window at the top is bright red because that's where the sun's coming from and we'll see that we're getting a little bit of that light spilled into our kitchen. However, the rest of this scene is quite dark, which is potentially not what we want, but that's predominantly for the fact that this is about 8 a.m. in the morning. So if we were to adjust our time settings to about 5.30 in the afternoon, we'll see that light is coming from the exact opposite direction, but still we're not getting much light into our space. The positive or negative of this is all dependent on where your project is, how it is designed and what you're really looking for. In this particular project, in this particular climate zone, it's quite hot. So we don't want too much sun coming into our building in summertime. We want to be able to control the heat. So this would be an ideal scenario. However, if it was a cold environment and we wanted that sun to penetrate deep into our space, that would not be ideal whatsoever. We'd really want to be seeing more of the light infiltrate into our spaces. So the light view mode as an artistic style is very good at visually demonstrating how that light is going to travel in and out and understanding is it going to be too hot or is it going to be too cold. Moving back to the front of our house and adjusting it to sketch. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. The sketch immediately changes it to well exactly that, a hand looking sketch. And that's because I've adjusted some of my items already. By default, you'll have thin lines, zero and zero percent extended lines. And immediately you can see that that is a different render compared to what we just had a second ago. So if we slowly increase our extended lines, 
we'll see where the lines end, that feathering effect of the hand sketch and the pencil moving past the end of the line, which is a very architectural style and detail. If we want to add jitter, that basically lets our pencil wobble. Because as we all know, not many people can draw a perfectly straight line time and time again. So having a little bit of wobble, having a little bit of inconsistencies in those straight lines really adds to the realism of the sketch. If it was 0% jitter, then this would be most likely drawn with a ruler. However, at something like 40%, even 60%, then it's a little bit more realistic of how we potentially could draw it by hand. There are a couple of additional settings here that are really awesome and help sell the story. So for instance, we have pencil, we have pen, and we have colored pencil. So if we change to pen, all of a sudden it gets darker, it gets more detailed, and we can change our outlines from none, thin to thick, all of which is personal preference dependent. We also have colored pencil settings, which basically really provides a nice hand sketch, obviously in color. Two more items down below, transparent glass, gives it even more creative texture and flair. It allows you to see through the glass and of course, hatched shadows, which further emphasizes detail in our architectural artistic renders. We can toggle those settings on and off depending on which one we like and how we want that to look. And of course, we can play between all of them. We can have hatched shadows on pen, we can have hatched shadows on pencil, we can have transparent glass on pencil or whatever combination we're looking for. Last but not least, we have our watercolor setting. And this watercolor setting is really, really nice. This is one of my personal favorites out of all of these artistic styles available to us on Enscape. Obviously, because we move to watercolor, the settings change and we have a few more different options once again. The first outline, of course, the same as before, thick, thin, normal. If you toggle across over to none, it works on watercolor. It obviously doesn't work on sketch when you're in pencil because there's nothing else but an outline in pencil sketch. So with our watercolor settings, if we wanted that outline to be thick or thin, we can just play with that here. The color gradient slider basically allows us to increase the hue, saturation, quantity of colors, and everything in that domain. So if we wanted it to be a little bit flatter, a little bit more generic, we could slide our color gradient all the way down. Or if we wanted more textures, more depth, especially in the shadows down below, then we crank it to 100. Our surface detail is obviously quite explanatory. Crank it to zero and everything is quite flat. Once we start increasing that to about 100, we're going to see a lot more texture, a lot more depth. You can see that changing here on the garage. The watercolor splotches are starting to really play their effect, mainly on those shadows. So if we didn't like that effect, lowering that back down to about 9 gives us very smooth, consistent watercolors. Realistically, if you're doing watercolor painting, that would likely be somewhere up here because watercolors are quite textured and imperfect. And because they are imperfect, the bleeding effect is really what's gonna make them look realistic. So sliding our bleeding effect up and down until we're perfectly happy. Just like all those other ones, we have our transparent effect, which lets us overlay the interiors if we need them. Now, as promised, there's ways to make these artistic renders even better. So if we were to set up this watercolor painting to exactly how we liked it, we go ahead and export that one image. And then our second artistic render would go to sketch. We'd have very thin lines. We'd adjust it to the exact specifications we want and export that image. Finally, to make this all come together, we want to come into Photoshop or any other photo manipulation software, drag and drop our watercolor in as the baseline. Next, add our sketch over the top. Come down in the layers section under normal and multiply the image. So now we have a watercolor artistic render with a hand sketch overlaid. If we were to amalgamate those two images, get our eraser tool and simply erase the additional elements that we don't need to try and make it look a little bit more realistic, like we're focusing just on that beautiful home. In a matter of minutes, we've gotten the watercolor hand sketched realistic artistic render, which if we were to do this manually would have taken us hours, if not even days. Anyway, that is all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.